All right, so we are here with a new revenue panel, uh, just an amazing panel of people, uh, and I want to introduce each of them to you. Uh, we want to talk about those amazing new opportunities for revenue for your music career that uh, a lot of people aren't aware of, uh, aren't taking advantage of, or just, uh, uh, yeah, that uh, we need to, to learn more about. These guys uh, know it inside and out. So I have Mike Mowry here from 10th Street Entertainment, manager of Ice Nine Kills. Uh, Crystal Torres is here also from 10th Street Entertainment. She manages Bad Wolves. Cody DeLong from uh, uh, SoundRank, which is VIP fan club and uh, uh, live streaming services. Uh, Matt Devine is here from Cameo, and I can't wait for Matt to give everybody a real good in-depth. I mean, Cameo is like the buzz uh, uh, thing going on online now. I hear about it all the time. So if you're not aware, I'll look forward to Matt to introduce that to you. And uh, I want to start with uh, recording artist uh, Wax. Uh, uh, Wax is also a, a brand new cameo celebrity, right? Are we allowed to announce that? Or I mean, I... Ce celebrity is a strong word. <laughs> well, uh, Wax, I wanted to start with you because you're an amazingly prolific artist when it comes to uh, the content that you put out online for your fans and to generate new fans. At what point in your career did you begin to value monetizing more than just your recordings and live performances? And, and what do you look for in terms of new potential revenue streams? Um, I don't know exactly when I started value. I mean, I probably started valuing monetizing when I first learned what money was as a little kid. You know what I mean? That it pays for things you need and whatnot. But uh when I first started, when I first started really digging into um, uh, having a fan base and making money on my music in probably like 2008 ish, uh, I always tell people the best way to do it is just to have a bunch of revenue streams. Whether it brings you a cent a year or it brings you a hundred bucks a month or whatever, just get as many as you can, and then slowly, uh, each one of them may build up individually. So it's good to just have a bunch of different kind of fishing. You know, the more fishing lines you have in the lake the better chance you have of catching a fish you know so uh yeah probably like 2008 ish and then you know i kind of i kind of got started when when youtube really became a popular thing i was kind of early on the early on the on the youtube uh that's kind of what got me to where i where i eventually got to you know what i mean absolutely i got a whole boatload of youtube questions for you uh what do you look for in terms of uh, like when you're looking at new products or new services like something like Cameo? What do you look for when you're d uh, deciding whether you're going to try something or not? Hmm. Uh, I look. I look in. That's interesting. Cameo. When uh, when I first heard about Cameo, somebody actually reached out to me about Cameo from Cameo, and uh, when I first heard about, it, I was like, uh, I don't know about this because it seems like a little, you know. Hey, I'm hey, I'm wax. Uh, give me some money so I can say hi to your kids. And I, it seemed a little, it seemed a little bit much. But if you figure out a way to make it so it's not only something that makes you money, but it's something that is a fun for you, but more importantly, b fun for your fans. Uh, I think that that's an important thing. So it, it, I don't, I don't like to look like I'm just doing stuff for money. You know what I mean? So, I, so I kind of make it so I just don't. Anything I do has to have some level of fun and some level of advantage, not just to me, but to the people that are that are paying for whatever service that is, whether it be Cameo or, you know, as simple as watching a video or coming to my show, you know? Yeah, or buying a branding iron. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Crystal, is touring and uh, recorded product revenue has uh, grown challenged. Uh, revenue for artists seems to have grown more diverse, almost out of like a, a need for it to become uh, my, more diverse. So how do you balance new revenue with your client's brand? Well, um, once touring stopped, uh, we had to look to new creative ways on how we can uh, create streams of revenue for our artists. So one of the things we looked at was creating a Patreon um, for Bad Wolves. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically content um, creation and people pay monthly subscription and sign up for that create um, the content that's being created. So um, yeah, we basically just decided to 
take what we're doing on social media and expand on that and put everything up on Patreon. That's cool. And has it been effective for you? So far, it's been pretty successful. Um, we launched in April and we're up to almost 1,500 patrons. So it's, it's going pretty well. We have two different tiers. We have a $5 tier and a $10 tier. Um, and on those different tiers, we pretty much launched the Patreon with having an acoustic live stream performance. So that was like the big driver to help push traffic and help people sign up. So it was separating what the band normally puts on their normal social media and what they're going to start creating on Patreon. And in addition to that, we keep putting out new content every week. So like the guys are putting out vlogs or covers of different songs and um, just like day in the life pieces. So it's basically what people see on social media, but more in depth. And it gives uh, the fans a more insight into the guys' daily lives. That's awesome. Uh, and that sort of feeds into what I was going to ask you about, Matt, like the daily lives. And that sort of feeds into the idea of personality. It seems like uh, Cameo is a place where a really strong brand and a really strong personality really ends up being to someone's benefit uh, on, uh, on, a, on a platform like yours. Um, so can you quickly introduce Cameo for those who might not be aware of it or un are uninitiated? And then um, uh, talk about uh, the investment that artists make in their brand, in their personality early on in their careers that ends up paying off for something like uh, what you guys do. That's a really cool question. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to give props to Wax. Wax has been an adopter at Cameo. We love him. He's, he's killing it. Um, nice to meet you in person, brother. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'm really, really proud of what he's done on Cameo. And yeah, quick, quick overview of what we do is that we are uh, an app or marketplace where um, fans pay celebrities, pay their heroes um, in exchange for short little personalized video shout outs. So a lot of people have seen these out there where, a husband will get Snoop Dogg to wish his wife a happy, <laughs> happy birthday or something like that. Um, generally speaking, they're just about 30 seconds long. And um, yeah, with the company's about four years old. I came on two years ago with headquarters in Chicago. Um, when I came on, there were about a dozen of us. Now there are about 150. Uh, we have a crowd. Music is just one of our verticals. We also have athletes and YouTube YouTubers and movie stars and everything else. And yeah, so we have about 30,000, over 30,000 talent currently using the platform. And yeah, it's, it's very simple. They just, they set their price anywhere from a buck to Caitlyn Jenner's 2,500 bucks. Chris D'Elia is 50,000 bucks, but that's a joke. And <laughs> until a Sultan books him on Cameo, I don't think he's gonna get booked at that price, but um, but yeah, so they, they set their price. It, it works with, with their, their lifestyle. Um, they have up to four days to respond to the cameos. So it works really well with the, with the lifestyle of artists who are on tour and they're, or they're in the studio, or in this case, they're, they're off and home. So it's even um, better suited. But yeah, you, you get, we have a lot of examples of you know, someone at the Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg level earning $2 million in their first year. Um, personally, I'm, it's fun you want to talk about emerging talent. That's the tier that I get most excited about because that's my background. So I was a singer of a band called Kill Hannah. We were on Atlantic for a couple records and Roadrunner, Motown, and I, I spent 10 years on the road um, as the principal songwriter and singer of a band that was quote unquote successful and I was living hand to, hand to mouth my entire life so I personally take that that plight of the artist very very seriously and I get really excited when I could help be a part of their journey and help practically uh, extend their runway so they don't have to give up music to go bartend and <laughs> um, yeah so we have example you know I just saw Pierre from simple simple plan came on and made ten thousand dollars in his first month and he didn't promote it at all use it very very casually and because 
like I mentioned, the average cameo length is so short. He, um, that breaks down to something like 15 minutes a day for him. So I think he, he, I think, I think Pierre took $10,000 in his first month using it for 15 minutes a day, which as we know, touring after all those expenses and your overhead and your crew and everything, you don't really net much more than that, even as a successful band sometimes. So, um, well, there are more and more examples of that. And, and to your, to your question about, uh, Branding as an artist, I, I've always believed that's that's critical. We we've noticed for early on the talent that first came to Cameo and the the most successful talent on Cameo were not necessarily the most relevant, but they were the most like biggest personalities that owned their lane. You know, there's only one. I think. I mean, damn. I don't know what we do if there's more than one, but there's only one riffraff. You know, so if you want riff rap, you got to go to riff rap, you know? and and that's that's the same across all genres. So yeah, we're seeing that in in, in the Warp Tour bands. It's exactly who who you'd expect. It's the kind of larger than life, really really strongly branded personas that 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 tend to do the best. And and yeah, to your question, I don't know if it's leading or not, but I I would always I I art I manage artists for a few years in my life. I was not great at it, but. At that time, a big emphasis, uh, I put a lot of emphasis on identity. And um, it was for exactly that reason. You know, we've all, uh, Kill Hannah, my band, we wanted, we knew it was a good sign when people started making, fans started making action figures of us. And I remember talking to Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance about that. He was, he was like, can't switch up your outfit now. You got to wear the same thing, for, you know, for this entire tour. And I, I agree with that. I think that's essential. And I, th I think it leads to, you know, um cameo is just one of many byproducts of that so long as you're good to your fans and your fans you know you show your fans that you love them and um you you are accessible and you you know you reciprocate their devotion to you then you're going to be in a better place to earn however and it's really cool to hear wax say that he throws he casts the net really wide because that's really really smart and um yeah, it just it just shows like DIY and hustle, and that never stops. Wax can attest to that. Like I don't think that hustle yeah. mentality ever stops. That's awesome. Cool.